Hey, Andy here from buildahottub.com. In this video, we're gonna look at all things waterproofing, tile adhesive, and tile grout. So let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, so one of the biggest concerns that most of you DIYers have when you start your DIY hot tub or plunge pool projects is that the vessel is actually gonna leak. Now, what I would say is in nine out of 10 cases where there is a leak, the leak is not through the actual structure itself. Generally, it's through the plumbing. So firstly, don't be too concerned about waterproofing the actual vessel or you know the, the structure because generally you're going to do a good job and if you do have a leak nine times out of ten as i said it's it's in the plumbing so that's the first thing there's a bit of a i guess a misconception that the that the vessel itself is going to leak okay it's probably not Okay, before we get going, it's always a good point at this stage of the video to say, please do subscribe to the channel. Just give me a thumbs up if you're liking the content. And if you've got any questions, you can, of course, hit me up in the comments below. Hit that notification bell so that you know when my videos go live. I put my videos out twice a week in long form, so this kind of a video. And there's a whole bunch of YouTube shorts out there as well. So lots and lots of content for DIY plunge pools and hot tubs, which is the main focus of my blog and of this channel. Okay, so let's jump right in and we're gonna now talk about preparing the surface. So if you have done a poured concrete form, you'll already be at this stage. However, if you have done a block build, then we need to do a few things to the actual blocks before we are in a position to move forward with tiling. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna actually apply a render to the surface. Now that render is a, uh, a mortar mix. Into that mortar mix, we normally have a waterproofing agent. Now, what I have found is that those waterproofing agents, certainly in the US, are quite hard to come by. I have absolutely no idea why. However, I have found one, it's called PWR, and there's a picture of it here behind me. So this is a additive that you mix into the, the dry mix before you mix up your mortar, and it just improves the waterproofing characteristics of it. Over in Europe, not a problem. There's a whole bunch of these. You know, Bostic as a manufacturer, you can see some of their products here behind me. Uh, these guys do um, really good waterproofing agents. It's actually the one I use myself. So these things, what they do is they're basically reducing the amount of air in that mortar mix. So mortar mix with air, the air is what causes it to be porous and it, for it to actually leak. So these additives reduce the amount of air and they improve the waterproofing characteristics. Now, they're not perfect, so we've got a few more things that we actually need to do. So once we've got that surface rendered, we're gonna to have to seal the concrete as well. So how do we go about doing that? Well, on my own build, what I did was I used a PVA wash. Really simple, really inexpensive. You mix up a whole bunch of builder's grade PVA glue with water, and then you brush it on. You do a few coats of this and it seals really, really nicely. You can get a whole bunch of chemical sealants they're really easy to come by. Anything that says it seals brick or concrete would do. What I would avoid is anything that is silicone based at this stage because anything that's silicone based could affect the adhesion with any tile adhesive that we're gonna use. So they, they may not work well together. So stay away from silicone based products. Anything that's the epoxy based or, or paint on is totally fine. Once we've got the concrete sealed, the next stage is to add a waterproofing layer. Now this waterproofing layer, again, is normally a paint on mix. In the US, you can use a product such as Hydroban. There's lots of different variations of this product under different names and brands. You can see Hydroban here behind me. Works really well. It's not the cheapest of products, but it does work really, really well. And this product, you, you paint in one direction, it's like an olive green, and it goes a darker green when it's actually dried and cured. Once it's dried and cured, you then turn 90 degrees and you paint the other way across the surface, and it just gives you a, a, a really good waterproofing layer onto that concrete. 
If you're over in Europe, then Ardex S7, that tends to be my waterproofer of choice for the European market. Again, you mix it up and you paint it on. It's a, a great product. It does exactly the same job as Hydroban over in the US. With our waterproofing layer on the concrete or, or onto the blocks as well, we're now ready to, to move on to tiling. And a question I always get asked is, do I need a separate grout and adhesive? Uh, you don't, however, whatever you use must be swimming pool grade. You can't use a bathroom, wet room grade grout or adhesive. It's not good enough. And what will happen is over time, those tiles will lift off and we certainly don't want that. So it must have swimming pool in the title. Okay, so it's got to say swimming pool grout or it's got to say swimming pool adhesive and you can get a mix that does both. I used a mix that does both. And when I was actually researching for this video to see uh, if it was still out there, I got it from uh, the, the Home Depot equivalent and they've stopped selling it. So I think the demand must have been quite low. However, there were plenty of other uh, separate grouts and adhesives that were designed or are designed for swimming pools. So as long as you use one of those, it's totally fine. In terms of brands in the US, there's loads of them. It's a huge swimming pool market, so you'll have no trouble at all finding a grout and adhesive that's suitable for pools. Over in Europe, back to my favorite Ardex products, the F, F for Freddy, and the number four is their swimming pool grade grout, and X for X-ray, and the number 10 is the swimming pool adhesive. Again, these are great products for putting those tiles onto your plunge pools and your DIY hot tubs. So I'm not gonna cover tiles at all in this video. I'll mention I really like the small mosaic tiles. I think you just get a, a really nice finish and because they're small, they're easy to go round the jets. It, it makes life really easy. So if I did have a choice, if I would, do my build again what i would do is i would actually use swimming pool mosaic tiles rather than the large tiles that i actually did and finally when we're looking at the whole waterproofing and sealing of the the vessel there's always a question that comes up about these so this is this is a jet holder this is the wall niche so it's part of the gunite system uh, if you're not familiar with the Gunite systems, I'll put a link to this under the video. I've got a video and a, a blog post that explains exactly how all of these come together. However, what you're going to do is you're gonna have your finished surface right up to the edge of this wall niche. And it's designed so that you can get you know, in behind it here with your adhesive, with your grout, with your mortar mix. Okay, so all of these are gonna add to the actual waterproofing. For me, I made sure that mine was really well sealed with a waterproof mortar mix. So I'd put that additive into the mortar mix and it was sealed nicely around this actual wall niche. However, if you're not sure, what you can use is uh, an epoxy stick. So something like a Genolite or a, a JB Weld. They do these nice putties that you can mold and then force around the edges to, to make sure they seal. There are other alternatives. Um, things like PC11 are pretty popular. It's not a favorite of mine um, because I, I find it a little bit messy, but it, it, it does the job uh, and it's readily available as well. But what you're gonna make sure is that you're sealed all the way around here with these into the wall before you're gonna do your tiling. So your tiles and your grout and your tile adhesive should be the very last thing that's, that's sealing up around these. Before you get to that stage, you wanna put that epoxy in if you're not sure that it's sealed well. And the whole idea of the wall niche is that you've got a nice flat surface that the jet holder can butt up to. It doesn't seal, you know, you're not putting any silicon or anything like that around here. It screws in and then the jet drops into place and that actually screws in as well. So the whole idea of the wall niche is that you've got a nice flat surface for that jet holder to butt up to. And of course, sealing around the wall niche is exactly the same process that you're gonna do around the inward suction pipes at the bottom of your hot tub where those uh, inward drains attached to. Just make sure, because you're coring a hole, 
try and get as much of that mortar mix in as you can, get it nice and flat. And then if you still are uncertain, you can obviously go around, as I said, with that epoxy putty, and it just makes sure that you end up with a, a really good seal around those jets. But it's, it is designed for purpose, so it's designed with this kind of a, um, a, a U section here to enable you to get a really good seal around it uh, before you move on to that tiling stage. Now, hopefully you've found this video useful. If you have, please do subscribe to the channel. It gives me lots of motivation to continue to make all of these videos that I do for you. As always, I appreciate the view. Hope you found this video useful and I will see you on the next video. Thanks for watching. If you've liked this video, please do like, share and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you on the next video.